that is Mr. Hussain's personal responsibility to his customers and to the public at large. The evidence will show that Mr. Hussain failed to act responsibly towards his customers and the public at large long before the accident of October 6, 2018. The accident, the crash, which occurred just a few miles from here in the county of Schoharie and in the state of New York. The evidence will show that Mr. Hussain was made aware, was made aware of his responsibility again and again and again in the months leading up to that crash. The evidence will show that Mr. Hussain, while fully aware of that responsibility, chose not to meet it. His irresponsible conduct, that is to say not meeting the duty which was made known to him, not meeting the responsibilities which were made known to him, created an unjustifiable risk, an unjustifiable risk that he disregarded, and that's embodied in the charge manslaughter in the second degree, or in the alternative, he created an, un an unjustifiable risk which he failed to perceive, and that's embodied in the charge criminally negligent homicide. The indictment against Nauman Hussain charges and counts one through 20 as follows. The grand jury of Schoharie County by this indictment accuses Nauman Hussain of 20 counts of manslaughter in the second degree as follows. That on or about October 6, 2018, in the county of Schoharie, state of New York, that Nauman Hussain recklessly caused the death of 20 individuals. Again, in the crash that occurred just a few miles from here, county of Schenectady, state of New York. Excuse me, county of Schoharie, state of New York. The indictment charges in counts 21 through 40 as follows. The grand jury of Schoharie County by this indictment accuses Nauman Hussain of 20 counts of criminally negligent homicide committed as follows. That on or about October 6, 2018, in the county of Schoharie, state of New York, Nauman Hussain, with criminal negligence, caused the death of 20 individuals. As the judge advised you, one count of manslaughter in the second degree and one count of criminally negligent homicide applies to each of the following individuals. Savannah Devon Bersesi, Rachel K. Cavosi, Matthew William Coons, Patrick K. Cushing, Mary E. Dyson, Robert J. Dyson, Amanda D. Pulse, Brian Gregory Huff, Abigail M. Jackson, Adam Jackson, Allison A. King, Scott T. Lissanikia, Aaron R. McGowan, Shane McGowan, Amanda Rose Rivenberg, James Joseph Schnur, Amy L. Steenberg, Axel J. Steenberg, Richard M. Steenberg, Jr. Michael Christopher Bukai. The evidence will show that Nauman Hussain made two conscious choices. Nauman Hussain chose to operate a business, a limousine business 
that subjected him to state and federal regulation. That was his first choice. His second, conscious choice. He chose not to follow the regulations that he was subjected to. His choice not to follow these regulations was willful and intentional and knowing. And his choice not to follow those, re uh, those regulations that was designed to evade, avoid, and ignore those regulations. The evidence will show that Mr. Hussein's choices led directly to and caused the deaths of those 20 people on October 6, 2018. The evidence will show that the limousine involved in this crash was manufactured by Ford as a excursion SUV, a passenger vehicle. A man by the name of Lawrence Macera was operating a limousine business in Troy, New York. He purchased the Ford excursion SUV and he had it stretched in Springfield, Missouri. Mr. Macero is going to testify, tell you about that. The stretching process added 15 feet to the length of the vehicle. <clears throat> the evidence will show that Mr. Macero used that vehicle in his business for a number of years. In 2006, Mr. Macero sold that vehicle, the Ford Excursion Stretch Limousine, to the Albany, excuse me, to the Advantage Transit Group in Albany. Advantage Transit bought it and used it in their fleet as a stretch limousine. Around the year 2010, the laws and the rules and regulations concerning stretch limousines changed in New York State. There was heightened scrutiny on limousines, heightened regulation. As a result of that, Advantage Transit, the then owner of the vehicle, sent it to Long Island for modification. They went down to Long Island for modification to bring it into compliance with the new regulations. Newly modified, it was then put back into the fleet at Advantage Transit and used as a stretch limousine with that organization. There's a representative from Advantage Transit who will testify. His name is Don Cottrell. Don Cottrell was the manager of the fleet. He did everything with the fleet that you could imagine. He was intimately aware of the vehicles and of the rules and regulations. Mr. Cottrell will tell you <coughs> that Albany Transit, excuse me, Advantage Transit used the vehicle for a number of years. As it aged, they decided to sell it. So in 2016, they took it out of service and advertised it for sale. Mr. Cottrell will tell you that he distinctly remembers a man named Shahid Hussain coming <clears throat> to Advantage Transit in Albany to look at the vehicle. Shahid Hussain is the father of Nalan Hussain. Mr. Cottrell met with Shahid Hussain, showed him the vehicle, and discussed the vehicle. Mr. Cottrell distinctly remembers Mr. Shahid bringing with him two sons. Ultimately, Shahid Hussain purchased the stretch limo. Mr. Cottrell, being the person that he is, spoke to Mr. Hussain and his two sons, and he told them, these vehicles, these stretch vehicles, are highly regulated by the state of New York. If you purchase this vehicle and you use it as a stretch limousine, to carry passengers, you will be highly regulated. He discussed the specifics of the regulation, of the regulations. He said, you will need New York State Authority. And the evidence will show that New York State Authority is permission to operate the vehicle in commerce. Permission to operate that vehicle with people in it for hire. And he made this explicitly clear to Mr. Hussein and his two sons. He further explained to Mr. Hussain and his two sons that you will need to make routine 
inspections of this vehicle. Routine inspections of this vehicle. And you'll need to write them down. Save those, that paperwork. Additionally, you will need to have periodic inspections by a DOT bus inspector, not a DMV inspection station where passenger cars are inspected. He told them, and he will tell you what he said, that this vehicle needs to be inspected by a DOT inspector. That's a state employee employed by the state of New York with specific skills related to the, the, the uh, inspection of vehicles such as the stretch memo in this case. Mr. Cottrell showed the Husseins the paperwork that he, Mr. Cottrell, used to inspect the vehicle routinely, and that's the same paperwork that you have to show the bus inspector who inspects it every six months. Mr. Mr. Cottrell recalls the Husseins asking him questions about these topics with respect to the regulations, regulations that were going to be imposed upon Mr. Hussein should he purchase the vehicle and use it to transport passengers for hire in New York State. Mr. Hussein did purchase the vehicle. He titled it in his name and he registered it in, in, it in his name. On the registration, it was in the name of Shahid Hussein, DBA, Prestige Limo, and Shof. That's C-H-A-U-F, the abbreviated form of chauffeur, it would seem. The vehicle, on the date of the crash, October 6, 2018, was still registered in the name of Shahid Hussein, DBA, Prestige, Limo, and Chauffe. Two years earlier, before the vehicle was purchased, the evidence will show Naman Hussain filed the DBA form in Saratoga County <coughs> to operate a business known as Hazy Limousines. That's two years before 2016. Two years before the, 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 uh, the limo involved in this case was purchased, Naman Hussain filed a DBA in Saratoga County to operate, to operate a limousine business. No later than the summer of 2016, <coughs> Nauman Hussein was operating a limo business from the Saratoga County location. And that business used the stretch limo that his father had purchased. So although the vehicle had been titled and registered in his father's name, Nauman Hussein used that vehicle in his business. And the evidence will show that were he to use that vehicle in his business, he, Nauman Hussein, would come under the new rules and regulations. Not necessarily the title owner, not necessarily the name on the, on the registration. It's the individual or entity that uses the vehicle in commerce. That's the person who is subject to regulation. 2001 stretch limousine had a seating capacity of greater than 16, including the driver. You'll hear this come up in the course of the testimony. Greater than 16, including the driver. That's a threshold set by either a regulatory agency, excuse me, by either the, the uh, a state regulatory agency or a federal regulatory agency. Another phrase that you may hear is greater than 10, a seating capacity of greater than 10, including the driver. Another threshold in the regulations, a seating capacity of greater than 15, including the driver. We're not going to get into the meanings of these phrases. The regulations themselves can, get, can become confusing. But the regulations themselves, the minutia of the regulations, really isn't involved in this case for this reason. Nauman Hussein never followed any regulations, ever, while he operated his business. That's why we're not going to get into the minutiae of the regulations themselves. 
he disregarded all of us. Because the vehicle, the stretch limousine, had a capacity, a seating capacity, of greater than 16, including the driver, the operator, the person who puts that, that vehicle in commerce, is considered to be a motor carrier. So, if Nauman is saying, put the vehicle into commerce and transported passengers, he is deemed to be a motor carrier. And again, the evidence will show motor carriers are subject to strict scrutiny and strict regulation in this state. That's federal regulation and state regulation. This is not voluntary. This is mandatory. If you want to run that business, you have to comply with the rules and regulations. And the first thing is the authority that Mr. Cottrell mentioned. Authority to operate the business is permission. It's a license to use that vehicle a vehicle that has a seating capacity of greater than 16, including the driver, permission to use that vehicle in commerce, permission to use that vehicle to transport people, permission to use that vehicle to transport people for money, which is what Mr. Hussain did, the evidence will show. The evidence will show that Mr. Hussain operated his business under several names, Prestige Limo, Hazy Limo, and Saratoga Luxury Limo. The evidence will show that Mr. Hussain was known as Nauman Hussain, Arslan Hussain, which is his middle name, Sean Hussain, and he used these names in his business. You'll see it on emails. You'll also learn, <clears throat> the evidence will show, that he would from time to time pretend to be his father, Shahid Hussain. He would speak to, he did speak to, a New York State DOT inspector. And he told the, the New York State DOT inspector that his name was Shahid Hussain. He spoke to this inspector over the telephone and pretended to be Shahid Hussain. Ultimately, the inspector caught on to this. And he said, well, if you're Shahid Hussain, who is Nauman Hussain? And he said, it is me. The evidence will show that he told the inspector, it is me and that he had permission to act in his father's name. <clears throat> Nauman had complete control of the business operation that put this limo into commerce for hire. He planned and scheduled trips with customers. He set prices and he collected money. He selected drivers and paid those drivers. He selected the vehicle to be used. He called and texted the drivers regarding the dates and times and itineraries for given trips. He paid for the automobile insurance for the stretch limo. He paid for that limo to be serviced. He conducted company business on his personal cell phone and on his personal email accounts. After the crash, he also admitted to police that he operated the business which arranged for the trip on the day of the crash, October 6, 2018. The evidence will show that on June 8, 2017, New York State Inspector Chad Smith, who worked for DOT, was in Queensbury, New York, conducting inspections at the roadside at the, uh, at the Queensbury um, rest area on the Northway. He drove back down after his shift and he had a few minutes 
still on the clock. He didn't want to break early. So he drove through Saratoga. And as he drove down Broadway in Saratoga, he noticed a stretch limo in the parking lot of the Mavis Discount Tire Store. These inspectors, tasked with the uh, responsibility of inspecting limousines, are familiar with the limousines in their area. These are large vehicles, rare. He noticed that he had never seen this vehicle before, or that he had never noticed it before. So he pulled his car over, he got the license plate, and he got the VIN, the vehicle identification number, which is on the windshield. On the dashboard, you can see it through the windshield. He ran the VIN, and he ran the license plate. And he noticed an abnormality, something that was out of the, out of the, uh, out of, uh, out of the ordinary with respect to the seating capacity for the vehicle. On the registration, it states the seating capacity of commercial vehicles. This was perhaps 30 feet long. He felt that this could hold 17 or 18 people. But that's not what the registration indicated. He made a note of the VIN and the license plate, and he passed the information on to an investigator, I believe it was Duffy, and asked him to look into this. And then that matter was off of Chad Smith's plate because he doesn't investigate, he inspects. In January, some seven months later, he was doing some research on the internet for companies that offer limousine services in the Saratoga area. And he came upon Hazy Limo. And Hazy Limo on the internet had a picture. And the picture looked awfully familiar to Mr. Smith. And he thought, this might be the limo that I saw at the Mavis store in Saratoga a few months ago. So he looked at the picture closely, blew up the, the, uh, the picture itself, I guess he, he enhanced it, you could see the license plate, and he read the license plate. And it matched his notes from the vehicle that he'd seen the previous June. He expands his search on the internet and contacts Hazy Limousine. Now folks, you'll, the, law, uh, the, uh, the evidence will show that it's not only illegal to operate a to, to, be, uh, to operate a limousine business without authority, it's also illegal to hold yourself out as one who can run a business if you don't have authority to do so. So he contacted Hazy Limousine on their website and asked to set up a trip. 13 people to go around Saratoga or whatever, and he asked for a price quote. Hazy Limousine responded, sure, we can do that. Here's the quote. Tell us what the date and time is, so on and so, so forth. And then Chad Smith had the evidence that this organization, Hazy Limo, without authority in New York State to operate a limousine business with a car of this size, and note he added, he asked for a car that could seat 13 people. That brings it under the motor carrier umbrella. He had the evidence to show that Hazy Limo was holding itself out as a motor carrier uh, with a limousine that could carry this many people. In other words, it violated the law. So he sent a, vi a notice of violation to Hazy Limo. Then he sent an email to Hazy Limo. And he said, look, you're holding yourself out as a, a company that can pr provide this service, but you don't have authority. I have sent you a violation, a notice of violation. You're going to have to deal with that. And from that time, in early January, 2018, up till October 6, 2018, some nine or ten months, Chad Smith had an intermittent telephone communication <coughs> and email communication with Nauman Hussein. Off and on for nine months before this accident took place, this crash took place. Mr. Smith's going to testify and talk to you about the conversations that he had with Nauman Hussein over the telephone, where Nauman Hussein told him he was Shahid Hussein. 
pretended to be Shahid Hussain. He will show you the emails that he sent to Mr. Nauman Hussain and the emails that Mr. Nauman Hussain sent back to him. And in those emails and in those conversations, Chad Smith told Nauman Hussain again and again and again the regulations that applied to him. The regulations which required the bus, excuse me, the, the, the stretch limo to be inspected by a New York State inspector, a DOT inspector, that the vehicle could not be inspected by a New York State DMV inspection station, an inspection station that deals with passenger vehicles. He made it explicitly clear to Nauman Hussain that this is not a passenger vehicle, this is a commercial vehicle. You will see email after email after email to this effect On, on an occasion, Chad Smith arranged to inspect the vehicle, to inspect the stretch limo. Now, there are several types of inspections in New York State, and he'll go through those with you. This was going to be what's known as a roadside inspection. This is where Mr. Chad Smith would simply look at the vehicle and talk to the operator. Different kind of inspection occurs when you put that vehicle up on a lift. That's done by the DOT certified inspector. Chad Smith is not a DOT certified inspector. He's a different kind of an inspector. He's a roadside inspector. The evidence will show that he saw this vehicle on March 21st, 2017, excuse me, 2018. And when he inspected the vehicle in Saratoga Springs, based upon the defects which he could see by just walking around the vehicle, looking beneath it, not putting it up on the lift, he took that vehicle out of service. He put a sticker on the windshield that said, this cannot be used for commercial purposes until the defects are fixed. And on that occasion, he again went over the responsibilities of a, of a uh, motor carrier with Nauman Hussain. Now, at the time that he met Nauman Hussain, on March 21, 2018, he didn't know it was Nauman Hussain because when he met the young man, he said that he was Shahid. Only months later did he find out that the person he was talking to was actually Nauman. Despite the fact that there had been repeated emails sent to Nauman Hussain <coughs> from January 8th forward, and despite the fact that Chad Smith had met with Nauman and inspected the vehicle and again discussed the responsibilities of a motor carrier with Nauman, and despite the fact that Chad Smith had told him that this vehicle, the stretch limo, needs to be inspected by a DOT state certified inspector <clears throat> on May 11th. 2018, a couple of months later, Nauman Hussain had that vehicle inspected by Mavis Discount Tire. A New York State DMV certified inspection station. But clearly not, and to his knowledge not, a DOT certified inspector. inspector. The evidence will show that Mavis was able to inspect the vehicle because in the process of inspecting the vehicle, they take a infrared reader that you see uh, in supermarkets where you, you cash out, they shoot your the barcode on the item you're purchasing. They use one of those for inspections now. They shoot the barcode on the, uh, on the registration sticker that's in the windshield of the car. And the reason why they use that barcode reader is to check the seating capacity of the vehicle to be inspected. 
because if it, if it exceeds the threshold of 10, including driver, they can't inspect it. But when the barcode reader was used on the stretch limousine, the one that had 15 feet and they added to the chassis, the one that could hold 17 people, the barcode reader allowed the inspection to go forward because the seating capacity was improperly listed on the registration. So Mavis inspected the vehicle, and you'll hear from the Mavis mechanics, and the vehicle passed the inspection. That's in May. <clears throat> Two months later, Mavis, the same group that had inspected the vehicle, same group of mechanics, the exact same personnel, saw the vehicle again. And on that occasion, approximately two months after the vehicle had been inspected and passed its inspection, Mavis told Nauman Hussain, replace all major brake components on this vehicle. Replace all major brake components on this vehicle. That's the master cylinder, that's the rotors, it's the calipers, and the brake pads themselves. They quoted a price to them, 800 to 1000 dollars. And with that information, that the mechanics that he had relied upon to do the illegal inspection of his vehicle, with that information that those same mechanics recommended to him to replace the brake system completely in that vehicle. He chose not to do it. He chose not to do it. He created this risk, the evidence will show. He created this risk, the evidence will show. He was aware of this risk, the evidence will show, that caused the deaths of those 20 people. Forty-two days before the crash. Forty-two days before the crash. The limo was in use in Saratoga Springs. It was stopped by the New York State Police. The limo, whose brakes had not been replaced, was in service in Saratoga Springs. The driver of the vehicle was Scott Lisinickia the same man who would perish in the crash as driver on October 6, 2018. Scott Lisinicki was driving the vehicle in Saratoga Springs. When he got stopped by the state police, Nauman Hussain was summoned to the scene. And the state police spoke to Nauman Hussain. That trooper will testify. The trooper checked the license of Scott Lisinicki he didn't have a proper license to drive the vehicle. He wasn't licensed to drive the vehicle. So the trooper took him out of service. He told Scott Lisinickia, you're not allowed to drive this vehicle. You don't have the proper endorsement on your license. You're illegally operating this vehicle. You cannot operate this vehicle. He made that clear to Mr. Lisinickia. He made that clear to Nauman Hussain who was on the scene. This man, Scott Wissanickia, cannot drive this vehicle. That's 42 days before the crash. Thirty-two days before the crash. Chad Smith, he keeps coming back in this case, and you're going to hear from him. He arranged to have another inspection of the vehicle after the state police had stopped it. He wanted to inspect it again. And on that occasion, when he inspects the vehicle again, that same roadside inspection, not up on the lift, he writes several violations. And he takes the vehicle out of service a second time. 32 days before the crash puts the sticker in the windshield again. This vehicle cannot be operated. 
until the defects are corrected. Present for that inspection was Nauman Hussain. The vehicle was inspected in the presence of Nauman Hussain. The sticker was applied to the windshield in the presence of Nauman Hussain. Chad Smith, again, went over the responsibilities of a motor carrier in New York State with Nauman Hussain 32 days before the crash. Took the vehicle out of service. It cannot be used. This vehicle cannot be used in your business 32 days before October 6, 2018. On October 6, 2018, 17 friends planned a brewery tour to celebrate the birthday of Amy Steenberg. They contacted Hazy Limousine. Now Mr. Hussain chose to have Scott Lissanikian drive the vehicle on that day. The vehicle was the stretch limousine. The vehicle had been taken out of service 42 days before. To use a driver that had been taken out of service himself 32 days before. The choice was made <clears throat> by Nauman, a conscious choice was made by Nauman, despite knowing that the driver could not legally operate the vehicle, that the vehicle should not be legally operated on the roads of New York State, despite the fact that he knew that Mavis had recommended that the entire brake system be replaced and despite the fact that the vehicle had never been inspected by a New York State certified DOT inspector. He still put that vehicle on the road that day for that task, driving those people for the brewery tour for money. For money. The evidence will show that Nauman is saying was completely aware of the unjustifiable risk that he alone had created and that he alone consciously disregarded. Further, the evidence will show that his disregard of the risk not only constitutes a gross deviation from the standard of care that a reasonable person would use in that situation. The evidence will show that it constitutes a brazen contempt for that standard of care. He didn't disregard that. He showed a brazen contempt for that standard. At the end of the trial, we're going to ask you to return a verdict of guilty against Nauman Hussain for the crime of manslaughter in the second degree or any alternative as a lesser included uh, charge for the crime of criminally negligent homicide for the death of each victim in this matter. Thank you.